How you doing, world? My name is Renegade L. Ray. I am an audio engineer. I'm an artist and I'm a writer as well. Tell them that they gotta come with respect when they see me. Hold up, wait, I might flex when you see me. Not a whole lot. Some of the artists that I've worked with, Big Boy from Outcast, Organized Noise, Killer Mike, anybody, Dungeon Family for the most part, but I've had the pleasure of working with artists like Future, T.I., you know, Bun B, different people that come throughout the studio, you know, on a different basis. I will always be an MC, but I decided to pick up another skill, which is audio engineering, to give myself a little bit more value, should I say, because for me, audio engineering, to add that to my repertoire, it just kept me in the room. So once I learned exactly what an audio engineer needed to be, what he needed to do, I kind of fell in love with audio engineering, and here we are. So today, I'm going to show you guys how I went about mixing my new record, See Me, produced by Bless and Jay Wise. So let's get into it. Hey, tell them that they gotta come with respect when they see me. Hold up, wait, I might flex when you see me. Not a whole lot, just enough to let you know you gotta be talking about a check when you see me. Okay, so my process as far as recording vocals. It's always the same for me, but depending on how fluffy I want it, and fluffy, that's the word that you want to use. Fluffy meaning thick. Depending on how fluffy I want the vocals determines how many stacks I'm going to do. On this particular song, in addition to the fact that I have these vocals stacked, I also have these vocals bust. What I've done and what I always do is I'll take my hook. If it's about four or five tracks, maybe even more, I'm going to bust those down to an auxiliary track. You see the output is 25 and 26 as far as the bust goes. So here, this is where I will apply my compression, my EQs, and in this case, because I boosted up a little highs to just to make it nice and bright, I will also apply my de -esser. But I apply all of that on the auxiliary track because this helps not only my CPU, but it gives me a group and it allows me to uh, affect the group and then also have still the option to affect everything else singularly. As always, like I said, I usually stack my hooks at least four times. Hey, tell them that they gotta come with respect when they see me. Hold up, wait, I might flex when you see me. Not a whole lot, just enough to let you know you gotta be talking about a check when you see me. So looking at that, you wouldn't think that that was four vocals, but for me, the way I came up looking at things and listening, I think that it's always better to give the audio engineer, whether it's yourself, or somebody else, it's always best to give them as much material as possible to work with so they can carve out the correct sound. So in my case, I have kind of a mid-range, high-range voice. I don't have too much bass, so to give me that uh, umph that I need in my vocals, I usually always stack them four times. So if you look here, I have my main vocal, and then I have my dub that's right up under it, and then another vocal that's going to the left a little bit. And then I have another one that's going to the right a little bit. Now, the reason I have these panned the way they are is because it's best, in my opinion, it's best to utilize your stereo imaging as much as possible. So I didn't want to go all the way to the left, which would be 100, and go all the way to the right, which would be 100, because then that's when your ear starts to notice that there's another vocal there. There's another stack right there. So the reason I kept them inside 81, 81, the reason why I do that is because that's as wide as I can get that I have noticed. That's as wide as I can get before the ear really starts to pick up on the fact that, hey, there's another vocal right there. And then that kind of distracts the listener. So as you can see, I've turned them down, but I've turned them down in just enough volume so that they're there and you can feel them if you take them out, but you cannot notice them if they're there. Hey, tell them that they gotta come with respect when they see me. Hold up, wait, I might flex when you see me. Now you might say, well, that's just a little bit, but you will be surprised when you're dealing with audio, you will be surprised at how much any little bit of sound, any little bit of audio can actually distract the listener or it can engage the listener. So there you go. Now, show you my verse. My verse only has two stacks. Woke up feeling like the coolest nigga in the country. If not, I'm amongst them. Killing them every day. I'm a monster. Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like puns. They swear. Now, the reason being is because when it gets to rapping, for the most part, most hooks are spaced out, but your verse might be intricate patterns and different things going on. So 
when you have intricate patterns going on, the more you stack, the more noise comes. Just like I said with the hook. Anything that is the least bit audible might deter the listener and they say, oh, I don't like it. In my case, with this particular verse, I only stacked it once, meaning I have the main and then I also have a dub all the way through. Sometimes I do ins and outs depending on the vibe, if it's live, if it's not, but I was going for a more laid back vibe on this particular song. So each verse, as you can see, is only stacked one time. Well, this verse is not meant to feel as big as the hook. And then there again, I have that pan at zero but I have it tucked just enough that you can feel it, but not hear it. Woke up feeling like the coolest nigga in the country. If not, I'm a monster. Killing them every day, I'm a monster. Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like puns, they swear. This vocal here is very important, especially for an artist of my own vocal range, should I say, because with a light voice like mine, it's important to still give it enough body. So, as you saw, I had it panned in the middle, and then I had it turned down just enough that you can barely hear it, but it still gives you some undertone. I have that vocal not only tucked underneath the main, but here again, I have the whole entire verse and everything related to that verse vocal-wise bust to an auxiliary track. And then that's where I'm gonna apply my compression, that's where I'm gonna apply my EQ, and my DS. Now, a lot of people ask me, does it matter the order that you have your plugins? Now, sometimes it doesn't, but most times it will because the question is, what do you want to affect first? So, if you have a compressor and then you have an EQ, now you're EQing the compression. If you have the EQ and you have the compressor after that, now you're compressing what was eq so on most of my vocals i use my compressor first which is what i'm going to use to control the dynamic range of the vocals and then after that i'm going to brighten it up and make it feel a little bit more comfortable with the eq now because i brighten it up so much sometimes the sibilance comes out a little bit which is then when i use the de as you see, this is the Renaissance compressor that I use. There are several compressors that you can use, and there's several compressors I use as well. But when it comes down to my vocals, I always feel like the, the Renaissance compressor gives me a certain bit of warmth along with even compression. And when I say even compression, I mean some compressors, they might smash your vocals just a little bit too much. And then some of them don't smash them enough, so now you have to overcompensate with your uh, ratios and with your thresholds. So for me, the Renaissance compressor, almost just like the R Volks, they give you a sense of warmth and at the same time they give you a sense of power in the vocal when you use them. Woke up feeling like the coolest nigga in the country. If not, I'm amongst them. Killing them every day. I'm a monster. Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like puns. They swear. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the moves so what? Uh, now, when it comes to a deesser, it's important to remember that a deesser is just a cousin to a compressor. So the reason why I chose this particular deesser with waves is it doesn't muffle it up too much because there again, no matter what, a compressor will always add a little bit of muffle. So here you will see my frequencies are a little bit higher. Now, sibilance, that usually will lie anywhere from your 7K to about anywhere like your 13K. So for me, if you looked at where I was at, my rule of thumb is to always go to 11K. And then I'm gonna go with my threshold to see if it's making it muffled, does it make it sound like you have a lisp? These different attributes is gonna determine now whether I change the frequency or whether I change the threshold. Now it's a tightrope. It's a balance between the both. But once you find that golden setting, you'll hear it and you'll know it. Now listen to the S's so you can hear exactly what I'm getting at. Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like puns. They swear. Listen, I ain't trying to come across root. So it's important that you do not kill your S. So you want to add enough de to it so that the S still cuts through the way that a normal S will. Because it's all about making sure that everything is as natural as possible. So if I take it all the way to the bottom, now you'll hear the difference in terms of it's too muffled. Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like puns. They swear. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh. See, that sounds like it's just, it's, it's guarded with something. So then now if I take it all the way back to zero,
Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like Ponzi. Swear. Listen, I ain't trying to come across. You can hear the S cut through. So when I find the happy balance, the happy medium in between the two. So styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like Ponzi. Swear. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the moves. So uh, I ain't trying to get into the sentimentals. Rather count my money listening to instrumentals. So. When it comes to vocals, it's important to make sure that everything is in its own pocket. Everything is in its own space. Here, you have ad-lib tracks. Like I told you before, I dub my vocals just to make sure that I give myself a good overtone or undertone, should I say. A good undertone and a good little bit of oomph to them. But here, as you see, I have highlighted, I have one track of ad-libs. Depending on the vibe of the record, that determines how many ad-lib tracks I'll have. So in this case, when it comes to the verses, this is a layback song. So my ad-lib track is minimal. Sometimes less is more. Now, in this case, I'm gonna treat these vocals in a way that just makes it stand out amongst the other vocals. So I like to use the eight band because this gives me more options. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to listen for those frequencies that make everything stand out. So it's not so much um, I'm stiff, more so I'm tuning in. Because a lot of times you want things to stand on top of the other vocals, but not in the way. Across rude, but uh, rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the move, so swell. Uh, I ain't trying to get into the sentimental. Nah, count my money, listen, across rude, but uh, rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the move, so swell. Uh, I ain't trying to get into the sentimental. Nah, count my money, listen, across rude, but uh, rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the move, so swell. Uh, I ain't trying. So, a lot of times, I'll exaggerate whatever effect that I'm trying to accomplish, I'll exaggerate it so that way I know exactly where to pull back from. Once you hear it and you know it's golden, it's time to move on. When it comes to the reverb on this particular record, this is a heavy, heavy reverb song. Meaning that I was going for a spaced out vibe a little bit. Meaning that everything is everywhere. You know, you got a vocal over here and you got a vocal over there. And so many different elements are doing different things. So if I go down here, you'll see where I have all of my time-based effects. So here, one and two, I have my favorite reverb, my renaissance reverb, because it's nice and big. It gives me a lot of space, and, and I have different options of how I can alter the uh, characteristics of the reverb. You'll see my parameters. I don't want my time to be too long because I want the reverb to be heard, but I want it to be felt more than anything. It's all about the feeling. So the more feeling I can give with less audible notice, then that gives me a little bit more natural vibe. Here I have my time. How long does the reverb last? So if I crank it all the way up and I'll play the vocal here. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the moves so well. Uh. When I stop it, you can hear that it tails out just a little bit too long. So in turn, all of that together will jumble up and cause a lot of like darkness in the vocal. So if I take it all the way back down to about 2.71, this will allow it to tail off just enough to not be heard when I stop it or not be heard too much when the vocal is going in and out. But it also allows you to feel a sense of space. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the mood so well. Uh, and then it's off. So here, because I have this on an auxiliary track, I can allow this reverb to be at its full capacity, meaning that the wet and dry ratio is 100%. The wet and dry is going to determine just how much reverb you're applying. So when I have it at 100%, that means the reverb is being applied to its full capacity. If it's at zero, that means there's no reverb on it at all. So when people apply their time-based effects to di uh, their inserts directly on their tracks, then that causes them to have to use a little bit less reverb than you normally would want. Why? Because this is a time-based effect. And there, it will affect the timing of your track, reverb and delay. Now, it might not be much, but you really don't want to affect the timing of your track in the slightest bit because that can affect the swing, where the vocal lands. Does it land on the snare? Does it land on the kick? Things like that. And the feeling, going back to the feeling, is the number one factor of any music. So because it is on an auxiliary track, I can use it at 100% and I can affect how much is being heard or felt 
via the volume knob or the volume fader of this auxiliary track. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh, right now, baby, I'm working the moves, so uh, I ain't trying to get into the sentimentals, rather count my money listening to instrumental. So, and I'm gonna play it for you dry. But, uh, right now, baby, I'm working the moves, so well. I ain't trying to get into the sentimentals, nah. rather count my money listening to instrumental. Now I'm gonna add the reverb. Mind you, the reverb is still being applied to the auxiliary track. But, uh, right now, baby, I'm working the moves, so well. I ain't trying to get into the sentimentals, nah. rather count my money listening to instrumental. So the key to reverb and delay is timing. So not only is it the timing in sense of how it syncopates with the BPM of your track, but the timing in how it fills your gaps in between the vocalist's words. So listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh, that little pocket of reverb gives you a sense of where you're at. Now, when I add my delay, listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but uh. There's just a little bit of delay that's in the undertone that allows it to carry out. Now, when it comes to delays, here I have my H delay. Now, though I have an EQ on here, we don't even need it. Let's get rid of it because I wasn't using it really. Why? Because here on H delay, I'm able to actually have a high pass filter or a low pass filter. So this determines whether it's going to be extra bright or whether it's going to be extra dull. Neither is wrong, it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So in most cases, we're trying to cut out some of the mud that is created by your delays or your reverbs because it adds extra tone, right? It's a copy of the original signal. So as you can see, I already have filtered just down to 100. Now, rule of thumb, I stay around that. Now, if it gets any muddier than that and I have to, you know, crank it up a little bit, then yeah, then I will. But for my template's sake, it's usually about at 100, maybe anywhere from 100 to maybe like 90 hertz. Some people can hear it with the trained ear and some people can't. But exactly what it does for you is it allows you to cut out that extra low mud. Now, let's go to it before I move on. Woke up feeling like the coolest in the country. If not, I'm a monster. I'm killing them every day. I'm a monster. Styles, I got tons. So I'll even go the further step to turn up the, the delay so it's super noticeable. Woke yeah. up feeling like the coolest in the country. If not, I'm a monster. I'm killing them every day. I'm a monster. Styles, I got it. Right? So here, that's at 100. If I were to crank this high pass filter, meaning it's letting the highs pass on this now you'll be able to hear the difference in the extra tone that's either in or taken out yeah. Yeah. feeling like the coolest in the country not i'm a monk killing them every day i'm a monk styles i got tons i'm kicking it with so the more i crank it the thinner it gets but that's a good thing because as it's thin now you can treat it as a ghost effect it's allowing it to sit up on the high end of the spectrum and not be in the way. Yeah. feeling like the coolest in the country. If not, I'm a monk. I'm killing them every day. I'm a monk. Kind of like your telephone effect that a lot of people use for their ad libs, right? So because this is a copy of the original signal, I would highly recommend that you filter it out just a little bit, and then now you can begin to level it out according to your own taste. Yeah. Woke up feeling like the coolest in the country. If not, I'm a monk. I'm killing them every day. I'm a monk. Styles, I got tons. I'm kicking it with Rapunzel. Never trust the fully. They be scheming like puns. It's worth. Listen, I ain't trying to come across rude, but... So when I turn it back down, now this allows me to have a sense of space. This is Renegade L. Ray, Southern Eagle Music Group representative, Waves Audio, signing out. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Goddamn, hold up. Any are you okay? Cooler than a pillow on a snow day. I don't really much speak game, either in or you ain't. Bring your hair like broke gang, girl. I know you fine, but please don't waste my time. Cause I got more behind you like a soul train line. Tell them that they gotta come with respect when they see me.